problem number 13 starts out like this, where uh, Black just finished the Sword of Joseki and White decided to invade here. Now in this 3-4 um, high approach Joseki where Black extends, this is the vital point for invading. Usually White has a stone here, which acts as a reinforcement. That stone is crucial for this stone being able to live and be happy. However, instead of white having a stone there, black actually has a reinforcement stone of his own. So the question for black is, how does black respond to white invading like this? Black's move is similar to the get strong and invading answer, where black needs to prevent the connection by playing here. Now, the usual move for white is either this one or this one, and in this case, white will try to do this one. However, since white doesn't have the reinforcement stone, this is just going to fail because black is going to go here. And if white pushes, black will back off. When white connects here, black will go here. This seals in, and because of this stone, white doesn't have a chance of making two eyes in here. If white plays, if after white plays this move, black doesn't back off but tries to press down with a move like this, then white can Hane and bump into this stone. And then Hane, this exposes this cut, so black will need to connect. And then white will play here, and now white is alive. So in this case, black needed to back off instead of pushing down on it. Um, now, as I mentioned, instead of playing this one, white also has the option of this one. Now, white will not die outright. However, when black pushes in here and Hane's, these three stones are going to be a pain for white to try and make live. So black's going to have a lot of fun attacking this later. As I mentioned, the usual Joseki is for white to have a stone here, so that uh, when white invades, black a block, then white can do one of these two. This one goes for outside influence, this one goes to live locally and give black the outside influence. If you'd like to see more on this invasion, go check out the Get Strong Invading series where this Joseki is covered. Problem number 21, the position up here is standard from a Joseki, where white approaches low, black does a two space high, White does a diagonal, black backs off, white plays here. And so the question for black is how does black attack these three stones? Black's move is to play the 4-4 four, four point here. Uh, this does look kind of strange, but it's very effective. If white fixes shape like this, then black will play here, forcing him out of the corner. White can then jump, black will peep, and then black will jump here, securing the the points on the right side. And these are still under attack, so white still needs to run some more. If after black plays here, instead of doing this one, white plays here, then black will attach on the inside, uh, forcing white to capture this stone. Black capture this one. And similar to before, white still needs to jump into the center, black will peep, and then secure the stones on the right side again. If black doesn't play this move and tries to surround it with uh, jump like this one, then white will do a similar sequence to before by playing here. Uh, but now, since black isn't as strong as he was before and doesn't have this stone to reinforce it, black can't attach on the inside, so black will need to back off. White will then play here. If black decides to defend his territory on top with a move like this, because this is an elephant's eye, white can threaten to split black positions by poking through it, and black's territory on the right side is not as secure as it was before. Problem number 30 arose from this Joseki up in the upper right corner here. The usual move for white after during this is to make a smaller extension, and then black will come back and fix. But in this case, white decided to make an, a really large extension over here, or decided to tanuki out together because maybe white already had a stone here. So the question for black is how does black attack this position up here? The correct answer for black is to play the fourth line move here. Uh, the point of this is it, it's a placement for setting up another move for black. Uh, so from here, if white pushes up, black will Hane, forcing white here. And then black will play the foot sweep, exposing this cut, forcing white to connect. Now white's two groups are separated and in trouble. If after black plays here, instead of extending, white attaches, then black is going to wedge. Uh, white Olatari, and then Hane, and then now black is just going to extend. If white pushes, black will extend again, and again, and again, 
Now white is securing some third line territory here, however black's thickness is incredible. Uh, this stone is essentially non-existent, so figure that black has a wall spanning the entire board with some extensions ready to go. Uh, from here black may want to start leaning on this stone and just expand this moil greatly. Backing up, instead of pushing, white might try to do the diagonal here. And if white does the diagonal, black will again do this move, forcing white to connect because it exposes the cut. And then black will push up. If white extends, then black is going to cap. Now, the, the point of a cap is for white to pick a direction to run. If white runs this direction, black can secure some territory on the top as well as expand its thickness similar to before and work with this stuff later. If white decides to push through to the left here, then black is going to build influence and strength here which is going to weaken his stone here. If instead of the diagonal, white tries the slide, then black is going to shoulder hit it and keep it down on the second line here. And even though white can connect up and even make some points in the corner, similar to before, black is just getting this giant wall of thickness, and this is not good for white. So that's the magic of this move. Uh, black has a lot of things he can do. It's very flexible is the key depending on what white decides to do. If white goes under, then black is going to press on it. If white goes up, then black is going to press from underneath over here and then use it to attack this. Um, alternatively, if black just simply turns, then white's going to extend. And now white is the one getting fourth line territory here. Black is getting some thickness, but it's more on this side of the board and facing white's base right here. So this is not as good. Problem number 136 starts with this variation where white extended, black went here to expose this cut. And so the, the question for black is, how does black use these two stones to attack the single stone here? Black's move is the shoulder hit. And if white tries to do the knight's move diagonal, black will oblige. Um, white will then attach, black will hane. White will extend, black will follow. Now black is building influence and starting to surround white's other group, so white needs to bring that group out. But as white's doing this, it's giving black the opportunity to secure his position. This is now threatening the push through and cut, so white needs to connect. And then black will hunt. The bully is down to trying to live with two weak groups. Uh, if white tries to live with this group, black's gonna lean on it and threaten this group. If white comes back to lean on this group, then black's gonna build strength, or in this case, Tanuki, to come back and attack this, to get another move on this. Uh, another thing white can do instead of the knight's move is to push up, in which case black will Hane. White Hane is back, black will extend. Doesn't want to cut because he's too weak, and it's gonna give white a lot of Aji. Uh, white will now come back to fix the cutting point. Similar to before, black is now getting some influence to fight this stuff, so black is gonna do a move like this. This is the elephant's eye, of course, and the key move in an elephant's eye is one of the two knight's moves. In this case, black wants to play this one. White can push, uh, black will back off, black is securing some territory and strength, and then white will attach, black hane, and then black will push up. This exposes the cutting point, so white needs to fix. Black will then come back and fix his cutting point, white will escape into the center, and now that this group is escaping, Black is going to come back and attack this group some more by taking this move. If white turns, then black will play here. This is just limiting the space that white can go, limiting their eye space. Uh, from here, if white attaches, black will just simply pull back. Uh, white could jump here, and then black will surround. Very, very long sequence. However, all of these moves that white did, all of the moves that white did essentially got him no eyes. Uh, white is not going to be able to live here, and white can't escape into the center. And again, it boils down to having two weak groups again. Problem number 63, white just finished the Joseki in the lower right over here by playing a move like this. And so the question for black is, where should black play now? You should note that in this Joseki down in the lower left, if black has a stone here, this puts a lot of pressure on the ability for this group to live. So black's move is to continue putting on the pressure with this move. Now white is forced to go into the center, white cannot live locally. So white will attach and try to get some strength by, by leaning on this group and going up. And then when black plays here, 
Black is expanding his Moyo. White is essentially just living, not really getting a whole lot of points. So this is a very good attack for Black. And just to exemplify, uh, White can't live locally. Now in, in Endgame, let's say for instance, if uh, up, up here in the upper right, if White were to play this, this would just be an Endgame move. But White doesn't have a move here to put enough pressure on this group. So this is okay. Um, whereas down here, if White does this, then Black is going to play this move. This exposes this cut. It's a placement to Suji, so it reduces it down to one eye. So again, White is forced to go out into the center. So if instead of doing this, Black tries to lean on this group and expand this mile by doing something like this, then White's going to do this, and now his group is fine again. And similar to before, now that White has this move, White will try to aim at this invasion later. Problem number 117, White just decided to slide into the corner with this move. What should Black do? You might recognize this similar formation from an orthodox type opening, um, except instead of the, the small knight enclosure down here, it's a, just a 4-4 point. But when White has this 3-space extension, this near a corner, Black's move is to throw in here. Um, if White jumps, then Black will diagonal, putting this stone under a lot of pressure. White can live in the corner by playing this. Black stones need not fear because they can make their own 2-space extension here. And from here, White will push up, Black will jump, White will lean on this stone a little bit, and then expose this cutting point. Black's move is not to connect, but to play the shoulder hit here. Uh, White, to escape into the center with this group, will play this small knight. And then Black will connect and fix the shape by playing this move. Um, if Black doesn't throw in and reverts to a semi-joseki by playing here, then White's going to get this move. And this is very, very good for White to get. Just to show the uh, the orthodox sort of opening that happens here, when White plays here, splitting the, the two sides, Black will extend from this side. Um, after Black goes here, White will make a three space extension here. Black will throw in here. And then White will jump. Black will back off. White will slide into the corner. But again, Black doesn't want to play this move. Black wants to come back and attack this stuff. White will then take the corner, black will back off, and then it reverts to what we just saw. And this is uh, the or one of the orthodox openings. Thank you. 